so my name is Joana Lapuinescu. I am part of uh, the power management kernel team in ARM. Um, and I'm going to uh, talk to you today about uh, the impact of recent CPU topology changes on Android Phantom domains. Uh, this is something that uh, myself and Dietmar have been uh, discussing for a while uh, with regards to the impact on the scheduler topology. Uh, these changes affect the Arch topology driver, so they will be affecting ARM, ARM64, uh, RISC-5, and they were developed uh, in a large majority by Sudip Hola, part of, uh, part of the kernel team. So here we're just discussing a bit the impact of those changes on, on Android. Um, I'm going to quickly go through an introduction on topology. Uh, discuss these topology changes and a bit of phantom domains, and then we'll see uh, what um, how these changes impact phantom domains. The topology examples in this presentation are going to be um, referring to a Qualcomm platform, the RB5 platform. Uh, this is quite representative for a typical Android mobile platform. So it has four little CPUs, uh, three medium CPUs, one big CPU, so three, three capacity groups. Um, and it's what we call a dynamic system, that is a DSU, um, uh, it has a single DSU cluster uh, with um, shared between all of the CPUs having an L3, L3 cache and uh, some coherency logics, loop filters and so on. Uh, and it's important to make a differentiation between sort of a dynamic system, one of the single cluster DSU uh, dynamic systems, and what we call typical big little systems in which we had multiple clusters. So each of the capacity groups of CPUs, so little CPUs, CPUs with the same microarchitecture, uh, would have their own cluster with probably a shared L2 cache uh, and the same thing, cache coherency logic shared, and a separate uh, cluster for big CPUs. So th there's a bit of differentiation there in order to set a bit the scene regarding, uh, regarding phantom domains. Uh, so, in regards to, uh, to topology, um, to, to, set, uh, to set the scene uh, about what we are, what is the information we are going to be using, so CPU topology information and sort of CPU adjacent information um, comes from uh, device tree and from ACPI, and it's exposed via CSFS through to the user. So basically, we'll have information on CPUs belonging to, to the same core or CPUs belonging to the same cluster, the same package, and so on. Uh, and it's uh, it's exposed through CSFS uh, via the folder you see on the uh, right-hand side. And the same thing, other information on topology exposed to the user is cache information. So we we'll have cache types, and especially relevant here uh, are going to be CPUs that are sharing a certain cache. Um, topology information coming from DT or ACPI is also used by uh, by the scheduler, uh, and it's sort of being compiled uh, in the form of uh, information relevant for scheduling uh, under uh, this scheduler domain hierarchy. Uh, so uh, the, the functions you see um, um, in sort of mid section of the of the slide are functions that determine the CPUs that go uh, in each of these scheduler levels. And they are, uh, um, some of them are architecture specific. So these will be specific to the Arch topology driver. Uh, for Android systems, for, for mobile systems, usually we are looking at MC, multi-core level, uh, which contains CPUs uh, sharing last level cache. Uh, the, the function that determines the CPU usually um, selects the smaller group between NUMA package and LC, but this is typically uh, last level, um, uh, this is typically CPUs that are sharing last level cache, and then at die level will have uh, CPUs across, uh, across multiple packages. Um, there is a newly introduced level, which is the CLS cluster level. I'm not going to discuss it here, although it has a bit of an impact, but uh, it, it would be too long, long of a discussion. I'm uh, happy to take questions later on this. Um, so, uh, sort of going away from, from a bit of topology introduction, uh, the changes, the recent changes uh, done by, uh, by Sudip uh, on this were had as a motivation uh, bringing these topologies closer to, to hardware, uh, having better um, topologies that describe hardware better. And one of the things that were uh, was lacking was the fact that when going for, this is for DT, uh, DT systems, when going through the CPU map entry in DT, 
uh, when um, CPUs were uh, grouped in different clusters, the cluster index was used as a physical uh, package ID, uh, which meant that they were actually presented to user space and uh, scheduler as belonging to different packages, which it was not actually accurate to, to the hardware of, of that platform. Uh, under sort of the same the same topic, and actually that first point is the most relevant for phantom domains later. But under the same topic, basically that creates the discrepancy between topologies you would obtain uh, with a DT description versus topologies you would obtain with an ACPI description for uh, for the same platform. So that was improved by these patches as well. Uh, also, uh, these patches improve the detection of uh, shared caches and especially impor important for, for the scheduler is the last level cache. Uh, so that uses the cache info uh, hierarchy in order to obtain this information. It doesn't necessarily change anything for, for Android systems and these phantom domains. Going, uh, going further to, to discuss uh, phantom domains, basically phantom domains are device three clusters that are grouping together CPUs of the same microarchitecture. So this is not necessary. Um, uh, so they, they come sort of from a bit of the history of the energy model and ES. So and, uh, the old style energy model and ES were initially um, demonstrated on Android systems. And at that point, uh, the energy model information was attached to the scheduler domain hierarchy to shed groups. And for this reason, when there was sort of a... Um, when this old style energy model was used together with dynamic systems, there was a need to use these phantom domains in order to, to mimic those typical big little systems. So CPUs, uh, as you see on the left hand side, CPUs were grouped together under these clusters, uh, despite them actually all of them sharing a last level uh, uh, L3 cache and sharing the same logic. So not actually being separated uh, in hardware in, in these clusters, but it was uh, needed by, uh, by software. Uh, after moving to a simplified energy model and with the added uh, support upstream for dynamic system, these phantom domains are no longer needed, but they are, uh, they are used um, uh, on today's Android systems. Uh, so, ooh. Um, sort of uh, finalizing with, with two slides here on the impact on um, of these changes on phantom domains. So an, an arching conclusion here is the fact that these um, phantom domains will no longer be uh, recognized as previously by the new CPU topology parsing code. Uh, that is, uh, they will be handled as if they were, they were not present. So if previously, as you see on the left-hand side, for a system, an RB5 system with phantom domains before these patches in mainline, um, you had um, little CPUs grouped together in a, a single, in a separate package, and then medium CPUs separated in, um, uh, in a package as well, and so on. This will be, let's say, sort of made invisible by the new patches, which properly now ha hand handle those uh, CPU map clusters as clusters and sockets as sockets and so on. So they describe a more accurate, more accurately hardware, and you would obtain uh, a topology that uh, actually reflects uh, reflects hardware. That is a topology in which all CPUs are sharing an L3 and they share uh, the, they share the same package. So one important information for user space regarding the users of uh, phantom domains is that. Uh, information on these groups of CPUs sharing microarchitecture and sharing uh, uh, CPU capacity. Uh, if package CPUs or package CPU list or um, CPU sibling CPU siblings list was used before to determine which groups of CPUs were sharing capacity were sharing microarchitecture, now is no longer possible. Um, the, uh, is there any question? Oh, I think it's just a bit of an echo. Uh, so, uh, in regards, so uh, under the same um, uh, the same lines, uh, the impact of the scheduler is quite similar. That is, previously with phantom domains, um, before these patches, uh, we would have two levels in the scheduler domain hierarchy. So, under MC, there will be CPUs grouped together, CPUs that were sharing capacity and microarchitecture. While at that uh, at die level, we will have all of the CPUs across all of these packages. After these patches and a, a proper interpretation of hardware, there will be a, a flattened topology and all CPUs be, will belong to a single level MC uh, as 
uh, they should as they are sharing a last level cache and L3 cache. Uh, the impact on the scheduler, so uh, going from phantom domains, going from these two levels in topology to a single level in topology, uh, the impact is, uh, so we don't, we won't, wouldn't see any impact in the en in energy aware scheduling. Um, the new ES and simplified energy model in um, um, uh, in the in the scheduler uh, doesn't actually uh, attach itself to the scheduler domain hierarchy anymore. It has its own data structure, so there's no impact there. Uh, while uh, the way that a CPU is being selected uh, for task placement uh, by ES, it actually goes. Um, through the CPUs in a domain that spans all CPUs um, of uh, that spans all capacities in a system, so it doesn't really matter if those CPUs are at die level or at, uh, at MC level. Uh, some impact could happen in the load balancer. So as you know. Um, uh, load balances are more often at lower level in the hierarchy rather than at higher levels. So uh, all CPUs will be involved or there will be load balancing happening between all CPUs uh, more uh, more often. And probably the structure of shed groups will also create some differentiation between uh, between these two systems. Uh, but the most, uh, the most important uh, uh, impact possibly is the fact that if there is any functionality behind vendor hooks that are re uh, relying on these phantom domains, so if there is any functionality, any additions to the scheduler that are um, relying on groups of CPUs sharing microarchitecture and capacity at MC level, those will no longer work as expected. So as a, as a conclusion for everything, so this was just to more or less raise awareness for um, uh, of these changes and to, to discuss uh, if there is a need for phantom domains and uh, if uh, if there is a need, uh, it would be good to to try to find other solutions rather than, let's say, some these DT uh, changes, these uh, DT uh, phantom domains that will not work, uh, will not work as expected when these new um, topology changes are adopted in Android systems. And that is all for uh, from me. If anyone has any questions. Yeah, hey, uh, Saravna here. I have a question. Um, yeah, yeah. Doesn't this break backward compatibility with older DTs? Like, that's something we try not to do. So, why are we just going and breaking it? So it doesn't break backwards compatibility compatibility with older DTs because it's just uh, fixing uh, in uh, in uh, CPU topology parsing code the interpretation of clusters. Uh, so, um, well, it's, it's not necessarily the interpretation of clusters. Uh, so. Uh, now in CPU map uh, in DT, you can have clusters, groups of CPUs belonging to the same clusters, and you can have sockets, groups of CPUs belonging to uh, to the same socket. Previously, so that was a problem for um, uh, Arch topology parsing code. Those clusters were interpreted as sockets, so that was a bug that resulted in uh, a um, different scheduler topology which didn't actually, for typical big little systems, didn't have a visible impact. But for dynamic systems, uh, if cluster, the use of clusters in DT is abused, which uh, phantom domains would be, uh, that would actually result in a potentially broken topology. I hope I've answered your question right. I am not, but I have a second question. Maybe that will clarify. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I missed the real initial part of this talk. But yep. why are we removing phantom domains, or uh, what you call as phantom domains? So phantom how those things used to work. Now you're spreading the task across all microarchitectures when we didn't do it before. So what is the interesting need to do it now? So we're not necessarily removing phantom domains. So um, phantom domains was uh, just a um, sort of configuration added to DT in order to uh, support, uh, let's say, early uh, systems that were using ES, uh, the old style uh, ener with the old style energy model, while dynamic was present. From the scheduler point of view, actually, the new topology without phantom domain. So let's say phantom domain is just an abuse of DT of clustering in DT, which is not reflective of hardware. Uh, so with the with dynamic system, actually, all CPUs are equal. They're all sharing the same DSU logic. So migrations of tasks between CPUs would happen. Um, in the same amount of time between all CPUs. So 
that is a more accurate description of hardware. It's not something we're removing. It's just it's something that gets updated to to match the most recent hardware. Oh, sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna have to take that offline. I'm gonna invite the next speaker uh, over, Lucas. Uh, if you wanna join Thank in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anila.